All right. Probably the bigger news is this right here. Dana White saying that Brock Lesnar told him he's retiring. And because of that, they're moving on with the Steve Bay. Dude, you know, yeah, Steve Bay, fight. yeah, which happens in July. You know, you, you know what this reminds me of? Does anyone else feel bad for Steve Bay, right? So what happens here is Brock Lesnar is that dime piece bombshell. He's that the hot one who you're always chasing. You hooked up with once, but you're just trying to wife up. And Steve is that loyal, well-read, down-to-earth mom, right? And you're like, no, I know. Well, no, I know that's there. But, but I'm coming up here. I'm aiming for the stars. And then once that superstar, Brock Lesnar, of a dime piece with Tim, goes, mm, I'm not into this game. I'm just going to keep dudes. You go, all right, let's settle down with wifey here. That's what happened. So poor Stipe, who's been sitting out this entire time, just be like, dude, please pay attention. I'm over here. Remember, I'm one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest. I'm over here. Then finally, once Brock went, I'm just kidding. Guys, I'm out. The UFC went, Stipe, you're up, buddy. You're up. You're up, pal. Congrats, man. You won. You won the, you, you, you get your rematch that you wanted. Dude, I've been asking this for a year and a half. I, I know. Now, this is our plan, though. You know, we just wanted to kind of wait it out. If I'm Steve, I'm like, dude, f guys, man, but you have to take it. Like, all right. Well, I guess. It worked out for him. He waited out, right? He waited forever. I, mean, I guess. No, no one's seen him fighting forever. Yeah. So that's fight. You know who loses in all this? DC. All right. So you're going to fight Steve for a second time. You knock them out in a, whatever, three minutes in the first round. Doesn't get any more definitive doesn't get any more black and white as that you beat him you knock him out now you're supposed to fight brock lesnar and get paid so much money you're gonna ride off to the sunset so brock's gone now you gotta fight steve again probably gonna be a tougher fight yeah. steve won't make the same mistakes and, and the first one was in a i want to uh, see uh conor mcgregor and khabib the mega made of uh well conor's talking sh you see that what happened I don't know, Harrington, go on, just break it down. What, what has been happening? I see it in the notes, and I did see something on Twitter. I know he did a podcast, uh, Connor, recently. He's talking about Namaga Madoff. I think he's saying that Namaga Madoff is running from the rematch. Uh, what have we got, Harrington? Well, he did a like a 45-minute sit-down with self-help guru uh, Tony Robbins, and uh, Tony brought up the Khabib fight. He said... Uh, yeah, Khabib won the match, but I won the fight. I landed the last blow of the night on his brother's eye socket. How can you leave that uh, without vengeance? Uh, you know, come come make this right. So. Send location. <laughs> Send location. Send location. Very, very simple. You want to, you want to fight me? You, you want to do this? Send location. No problem. Uh, you know, I mean... I get where Connor's coming from. I don't. I don't even. I don't really get where Connor's coming from. If I'm, if I'm Connor, I want to go. I want to uh, see uh, Connor McGregor and Khabib Nurmagomedov. Uh, well, Connor's talking shit again. You see that? What happened? I don't know, Harrington. Go on. Just break it down. What What has been happening? I see it in the notes, and I did see something on Twitter. I know we did a podcast. Uh, Connor recently. He's talking about Nurmagomedov. Madoff. I think he's saying that Nurmagomedov Madoff is running from the rematch. Um, what have we got, Harrington? Well, he did a like a 45 minute sit down with self help guru uh, Tony Robbins, and uh, Tony brought up the Khabib fight. He said, uh, Yeah, Khabib won the match, but I won the fight. I landed the last blow of the night on his brother's eye socket. How can you leave that uh, without vengeance? Uh, you know, come, come make this right. So. Send location. <laughs> Send location. Send location. Very, very simple. You want to, you want to fight me? You, you want to do this? Send location. No problem. You know, I mean, I get where Connor's coming from. I don't, I don't even, I don't really get where Connor's coming from. I'm, By the looks of it, dude, 170 pound fight. Nick Diaz versus Connor McGregor. Finally, Nick Diaz comes out of retirement. This is the fight to make for all parties involved. Nick Diaz would take that fight. Why wouldn't he? He would take the number one money making fight in the world, and also. 
a winnable fight for Nick Diaz. It's not a foregone conclusion. He's been off for so long, but fuck it, dude. It's Nick fucking Diaz. The, he could he can outbox Connor, get him to the ground, and fucking strangle him. That actually could, there's a viable way that that could happen. I'm getting excited as we're talking about whoa, it. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's not a viable way. That is probably what would happen. <laughs> okay? There's weight classes for a reason. Okay, Nick Diaz is a is a big fella. You know, yeah. he's not a skinny little guy. He's bigger than Nate. He's a bigger guy. He's got more experience. He's very he's very good. Nick Diaz is a reason he got so far as he did. Um, but you're right. I mean, if Connor said that, you know, I'm I reckon that Nick Diaz would come out of retirement to take that fight, avenge the loss of his brother. You know, the big brother steps in. There's, for Connor, he gets to take out both Diaz brothers who has that on their resume Nick and Nate fuck you both you know um, the that, Diaz that, killer there's a great storyline the UFC could promote it all day long it'd be the biggest fight ever Nick. it would be it would be the biggest MMA fight ever I think I don't think you could put a bigger MMA fight on right now the return of Nick Diaz versus Conor McGregor the storyline the brothers there's not a bigger fight in the world right now I'm getting goosebumps I'm gonna I, I this is if there's anything that happens in the world that would be the one fight i would fly anywhere in the world to watch that fight that would be so much fun the fucking nick diaz coming about just giving him the middle fingers nate being in his corner connor not giving a fuck the press conferences leading up to that are you fucking kidding me do you know who wouldn't like it connor nate diaz <laughs> <be> like fuck <laughs> home <laughs> He'd be fucking fuming. He will be fuming. He's like, what the hell, Nick? This is my trilogy fight. Why are you coming in and stealing it? And he'd be like, you know, come on, little bro. You had two shots at this guy. You know, you made some money. Let me have a piece of the pie, please. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, I think that would sell well. It wouldn't be bigger than Khabib. The biggest fight UFC could do right now is the rematch between Khabib and Connor. I don't think we're going to see that. Uh, Ali Abdelaziz is calling for just Gagey versus Conor McGregor. I don't think we're going to see that either. Um, saying that, though, Khabib Nurmagomedov, he is free to come back. I think they reached a deal with the uh, Nevada State Athletic Commission. So his suspension will be served very, very soon. So he'll be fighting Dustin Poirier, by all accounts, in July in Abu Dhabi. Is that correct, Harrington? Uh, well, they're actually going to take 35 days off the suspension, which lines up with the September Abu Dhabi card. So originally it was going to be to October. They took a month off to make it work for Abu Dhabi. Okay, so and that was because he said he wouldn't fight unless his boys were allowed to fight too. So they... they, they they lessened all of their suspensions. No, it was Nevada State Athletic Commission was, uh, you know, they, they enjoyed the good behavior. It had nothing to do with this. So, but the, it was all there. It was all there. It was more than one suspension. So Khabib had got six months. His boys got a year. And Khabib said, I don't care what you give me. I'm not fighting until all my team is free. So and they made their team free early. Yes. Wow. I wonder well, how that happened. <laughs> Uh, no idea. You know, <laughs> yeah, Keith Kaiser and the head of the athletic uh, commission just went. You know what? He woke up one day and said, "Do you know what? I've been following these young rap scallions on social media, and yes, they are a uh, they're a feisty bunch from Dagestan. But I tell you what, I see them in a different light now. Um, you over there reduce their sentences purely." Out of the goodness of my heart, young Dagestanian, step forward. You are free to fight once again. Yes, I like what I see. These guys have, you know, they got very high moral standards. I guarantee it didn't go down like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, whatever, dude. I don't give a shit. I, I like the fact. I like the. It's pretty. It's pretty real ass for them to just fucking not even give a shit. I, I in a weird way, I kind of respect it. Them going like, yeah, all right. Somebody's palms got greased well, here. They're all fighting. Who gives a shit? It's silly anyway. What's the difference between a? You know, uh, it's not even like they didn't like they didn't cheat. It was out of ring antics. So it's not like I don't know. In, in a weird way, I don't really care. If if it was because they got suspended for doing steroids or doing something like that and cheating. Then I would feel a little bit more, but this is just like somebody getting, you know, three days of after school suspension instead of six days of after school suspension. Yeah, exactly. It, it's not a big deal. And, you know, uh, the economic impact on the city of Las Vegas for a big fight like Khabib in there, you know, it earns the city a lot of money. Certainly if the rematch with Connor's is going to happen, that's that's huge for them. So, you know, who knows? Maybe there was that had something to do with it as well. What else we got in the notes, Hamilton? What else is happening in the world of mixed martial arts that we care to talk about? Well, I see that uh, they're going to induct Rashad Evans to the Hall of Fame. 
as well, which yes. is pretty cool. And rightly so. I am rightly so. And uh, it will be happening, if I'm not mistaken, the same ceremony that I am. I'll just say that while he beat me in the fight, I'm top of the bill at the uh, Hall of Fame ceremony. You know, it is what it is. Small victories, but you take him where you can. So, I might have won the fight, but, but I won the battle, you know. Yeah, I'm, so are you saying that you're more deserving than the Hall of Fame than Rashad Evans? I'm just saying I'm top of the bill. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. What I'll leave it there. Saying? Now, what I'm saying. Your class? <laughs> Let me turn this around real fast before I sound like a total asshole. I will say this. Um, I was so happy to see that because if there's one guy that deserves it more than myself, I mean, Richard Evans been around since the Ultimate Fighter season two. Incredible guy. Awesome person. Hell of an ambassador for the sport. Never tested positive, never had any scandal, put on some amazing fights, some amazing knockouts. And um, I was, yeah, I mean, just a fantastic ambassador for the sport of mixed martial arts and really paid his dues in this sport. And I love to see him getting the recognition. Well, he already had the recognition. Getting, you know, the uh, the gratitude that he deserves. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame 100%. So that's beautiful, Lewis. Yeah, I agree. Rashad's, uh, Rashad's incredible. I mean, he's the the... I, I remember I was such a big Chuck Liddell fan when they fought, and fucking he, dude, he crushed Chuck Liddell's soul. It was nuts, dude. He just, it, and it, Rashad wasn't even known as a striker at the time. He was a, a wrestler who dropped down to light heavyweight. Nobody saw that being the way that Rashad, and Rashad Evans well, was, he was wrestle fucking a lot of dudes back then. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden he fell in love with his hands. Go ahead. I'm just saying that me and Rashad Evans had a very, very highly contentious split decision fight. <laughs> and in Rashad's next fight, he knocked out cold the Iceman. When the Iceman was in his prime, uh, Rashad Evans started the decline of the Iceman. I'm just saying that that was his next fight after losing a very, very close one what to me. Start. So if you use MMA math, realistically, I could have knocked out Chuck Liddell in the first round as well. Well, you know? if you use MMA math, you did knock out Chuck Liddell in the first round. Um, if you carry the two and you divide by seven, you're currently the UFC heavyweight champion. We've done the math before plenty of times. Okay, we know yeah. who the real champ is. Pound for pound champion of the world right now. That's what I'm saying. I know That's what I'm boy. saying. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.